Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another cracking cryptocurrency market update. Today is Monday, December 13th, 2021. Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today, wherever in the world you happen to be watching the show from and wherever on the internets you happen to be watching us, whether that's YouTube, Twitch, or DLive. Shout out to everybody in the chat again. Hopefully you guys are doing fantastic. We've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, it's been an interesting couple of days in the market. Weekend pump was a scam per the title of the video. Uh, weekend pumps are almost never to be trusted. Remember guys, the market does tend to drift upwards over the weekend, almost always, almost indefinitely, as if it's a rule that one could follow. Uh, the reason for that, I think is psychological. Most individual retail traders, <clears throat> excuse me, most retail traders are going to be more bullish on average than bearish. And this is just basic. Uh, this is very simple to understand. For example, if you're a newer crypto trader or investor or just someone interested in the space, but you're coming into an exchange or you're coming into the marketplace uh, to purchase assets, that's what you're going to be doing. Your initial forays are, of course, going to be purchasing. Remember that short selling is a more complicated activity that really only seasoned or veteran traders partake of. Uh, usually when individuals, and this is why we stress hedging so much in the coursework, but uh, usually when individuals are newer traders, they're completely terrified with red candles and all they really exist for is green candles. So uh, individuals are always going to be coming in and bidding up price, usually over the weekends. This is why you often see high volatility because people don't really know what they're doing. You have professional traders not trading over the weekend. Uh, and then Monday comes in and price almost always closes back down. So this is a kind of a good example. It kind of works two ways. There's two ways I've seen it happen. Overall, I'd say the rule is that the market tends to drift up slightly over the weekend. However, uh, there is a correlation I've seen. It's not the greatest, but it's but it's pretty decent. If the market closes down on Friday, it will drift up on Saturday. Uh, and then on Sunday, we'll tend to drift back down for a close and an open of Monday's candle right back where we start, right below, right back where we were on uh, Friday's close. Alternatively, if the market closes up on Friday, you might see some initial selling pressure over the weekend until Sunday bids price back up right to where we closed. And you can kind of see this with gap strategy as well with the CME futures on Bitcoin as well. Uh, okay. So weekend pump was a scam. We're right back to where we started. Uh, price is actually, uh, so over the last, uh, over the last hour, price has made a decent attempt to rise back up, but we are still making lower highs on the lower time frames, uh, And we are in the process of making a lower low on the daily and higher time frame. So we'll get, we'll get to that here in a second. When we get to the charts, uh, first shout outs to everybody in the chat, Ron Legato, Jordan Stotts, crypto, Jenny, Alex, 81 SG and crypto bull. Good to see you, my friends. Uh, let's talk about a little bit of news guys. So, uh, Probably the most uh, pressing thing, and this is for the Bitcoiners out there. Uh, today, uh, we uh, today ninety percent of all Bitcoins have been mined into existence. Right, so there is two point one million Bitcoin left. Or excuse me, two hundred ten thousand. Yeah, left to be mined into existence. That will not occur based on blockchain activity and based on the halving schedule for Bitcoin until February twenty one forty. All right, so we've got a hundred years plus before the last 10% of Bitcoin is going to be mined into existence, all right? So if you're talking about the slow growth to, to, uh, to deflationary uh, status, this is, certainly, this is certainly the one. All right, um, uh, Gravy, Grits, and Green. We've got Rokoth and Right on Rice in the chat as well. Shout outs to you guys. Uh, it was an interest, it's kind of interesting um, uh, when we look at outflows on institutional products as well. This is something I keep my eye on. Um, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. What I've noticed uh, is that over the last month, uh, the Eurozone seems to be far more bearish on cryptocurrency than the states. Uh, and, and the way that I can look at that or have some number to metric to place that is looking at uh, outflows and inflows uh, for institutional grade products uh, and their assets under management. Now, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum have been a little different. Uh, Bitcoin has seen more net inflows overall, both in the Eurozone and in the States, but Ethereum has seen more outflows. Okay. Um, I've seen some decrying of the Solana project lately. This is something that I kind of paid attention to on the Twitter and Reddit space over the weekend is that Solana is really under fire for being centralized uh, for their uh, for their protocol developers uh, lying about total circulating supply twice. Um, you know, I, I won't really state too much to that. Overall, I can tell you that certainly when it comes to the DeFi space and Web3, uh, you know, you've got Matic um, or the Polygon Network. It was previously called the Matic Network. Now it's Polygon, but still the ticker is Matic. Uh, great project. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Solana, obviously very quite popular. Polkadot, Kusama, Kurara, uh, these are all, and one of my personal favorites, Moon River. So these are all, um, these are all really cool chains. Uh, these are all really cool products that I uh, expect to see a lot of development going on moving forward. Then of course you've got your big dogs, Bitcoin and Ethereum. But uh, getting back to my point, outflows in the eurozone were greater than inflows uh, in in the eurozone 
uh, over the last week looking at assets under management and net flows out and in. And then in the states, the states do seem to be more bullish on the crypto space with inflows being totally in the positive. In fact, outflows uh, were uh, so outflows for so flow for Ethereum in the eurozone was net negative. OK, meaning more money left institutional grade products for cryptocurrencies based on Ethereum in the eurozone than money came in, whereas in the states we saw more money come in than money flow out. So just understand if you're an institutional investor or an accredited investor uh, and you go to something like one of these ETFs or you're you're a, uh, you have you have a, a or even um, a GBDC is a good example. Uh, but there are other products available to larger investors. And so when you go to uh, invest into these spaces, uh, you can pull your money out. You can put your money in anybody who's seen any movie about kind of investing. The Big Short is a good example uh, with uh, Christian Bale playing Michael Burry there when uh, he you know, was kind of constantly under fire from his investors who wanted to pull money out of the account and he actually stopped them from pulling money out of the account in real life and of course in the movie. Uh, and that allowed them to obviously get their, get their massive windfall in the end when Michael Burry was uh, proven right. Uh, uh, interesting little tidbit, if you guys are feeling bad, uh, if you guys have had a rough spell of trading lately, maybe you've been caught by this downturn a little bit hard, always remember that you should be grateful for what you have because things can always get worse. So over the weekend, uh, it, over the weekend, uh, the owner of Board Ape. So if you guys are familiar with NFTs, the Board Ape Yacht Club is one of the most popular NFT collections out there. Uh, the Board Ape number three thousand five hundred and forty-seven. It's a very hot. You know, board the Board Ape Yacht Club is extremely hot. These these uh, these NFTs go for over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. This individual who owned uh, NFT uh, uh, the Board Ape number three thousand five hundred forty-seven accidentally sold it for 3000 American dollars instead of what it was worth, which is $300,000 or $340,000. Yeah. So this was considered to be a fat finger error. It's funny. The buyer paid an extra $34,000 in gas fees to speed up the transaction, ensuring that no one could snap it up before them. Uh, <laughs> And then he promptly turned around and relisted it for $248,000. Not a bad way. Not, 10 minutes to make $200,000. Not a bad flip, if I do say so myself. Uh, so always remember that things can get much, much worse for you out there. Um, we had a pretty, we had a bunch of uh, kind of announcements in the metaverse and overall in the DeFi space. Uh, the uh, if you guys are familiar with the Solve product, uh, Solve protocol, S O L V is their ticker. Uh, they're going to be doing what they call an initial voucher offering. They're going to be minting NFTs and allowing those to be sold prior to the launch of the chain. Uh, they're going to be issuing uh, uh, one million Solve tokens through this what they call initial voucher offering IVO, which is going to kick off on the Binance NFT platform on December thirteenth. Uh, engine starter, pretty cool. Uh, you guys know that I'm bullish on engine and crypto gaming in general. Uh, engine starter is going to be doing, uh, 20 initial, uh, uh, initial decentralized exchange offerings, IDOs, um, uh, before the end of 2021. So for a total of $2.8 million worth of allocation. So for you guys looking for your quick flips or looking to get on your IDOs, uh, pay attention to what engine starter is doing. Probably not a bad place, uh, to point your mouse clickers. Uh, all right. So that's kind of all the news that I wanted to cover for you guys here a little bit. There was some adoption news and some some gaming news that came over over the weekend too, but uh, nothing. Oh, I uh, did want to talk about the uh, the Badger DAO. If you guys uh, uh, heard about this, the Badger DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, uh, very similar to the Maker DAO. Uh, it was exploited for 120 million dollars earlier this month, and the Badger DAO did put out some information on exactly how that occurred. You guys can go search for that online if you're interested in that. Uh, secondly, uh, I did see that there was yet another exchange. Uh, hacked over the weekend. My crypto wallet out of Australia was hacked. And there was also another decentralized exchange that was hacked. Uh, I know my crypto wallet was uh, pulled down for like $20 million. And I'm not exactly sure what uh, what the other uh, DEX was hit for. I remember reading that it was like $27 million or something like that. So uh, obviously just a warning that this is still early spaces. And the more, that, you know, if you, Bitcoin is not hacked. <laughs> Ethereum is not hacked. Uh, it is these these newer projects, these newer protocols that are experimenting with new things. Uh, and and so the risk and the return the the risk is much greater there, but so is the reward, right? We have uh, assets obviously outperforming the more stable investments like Bitcoin. Uh, but this is long end. Uh, this is long tail, short tail investing, right? So if you guys are not familiar with like long tail, short tail investing theory, it is that 
Uh, there is a short tail of the investment curve and the long tail of the investment curve. Essentially, you guys can go look this up. This is a pretty cool concept. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, I am a, uh, I'm a short tail investor. So I invest primarily in Bitcoin and Ethereum and solid projects that have historicity uh, and will grow slowly over time. But the compounded returns over time will be larger on average than the short tail, which will outperform you know, quarter to quarter or, you know, month to month, of course, usually to a large degree, uh, the the short tail investment. So in the cryptocurrency space, I would consider Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, you know, um, well, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cardano now. XRP is kind of interesting because uh, we do have some information that investors have increased their holdings of XRP pretty significantly uh, over the last several months. So something interesting to watch out for. Uh, but these large projects that have real use case, uh, you know, Polkadot, Kusama, Carrara, Moon River, I think, uh, fall into those baskets as well, Matic. And then you have, uh, you know, your meme coins, you know, Shiba Inu, your Doge coins. You know, Doge is a little different, but um, you know, your Shiba Inus, your Shiba Bonks, all these bonk tokens, uh, you know, but you guys know the story, things that just launch and just skyrocket up 10,000%. Um, the reality is that most investors are going to lose their shirt chasing after those gains. This is just the, this is just the cold hard truth, guys. There is, of course, opportunity in these markets to make those massive returns and massive gains. But the reality is, is that most individuals who chase them are going to end up losing, right? Uh, there, there really is a lot of concentrated pump and dump techniques going on in the crypto markets. There's a lot of marketing and influencing and, and scams and lies and rug pulls. Uh, this is just, it comes with the territory. It's a nascent emerging technology. You've got, uh, you know, very little regulation and you're going to have kind of the, the worst of the worst, honestly, out there attempting to get over on individuals. Um, so, uh, Although you can, of course, outperform just about any investment if you are lucky or if you have inside information or if you're able to just time it right or if you really do your research and, and find a way to, to find an edge in that particular market. Very hard to do. Uh, whereas if you just want to live your life and invest in things that are high quality and uh, invest in things that will change the world, then you're, gonna, you're going to miss out. Uh, in the short run, but on in the long run, you will be handsomely rewarded. And it's far safer. It's 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 far less uh it's far less stressful. Let's just put it that way. With that being said, let's get into the charts and look at today's markets, see what trades, see what the strategies are recommending that we do and what positions we take. And let's get all right. Here we are in the live scene. Uh shout outs. We've got some new I see uh new Praven. We've got B Flow back in the chat. Uh let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Justin, do you, or your team have, uh, have an eye on any specific rare earth metal stocks that you're willing to share? You know, not particularly, uh, you know, what I do have my eye on honestly is energy. Um, you know, there, there is no, uh, okay. So, uh, I guess one, just one thing I'll talk about real quick. Uh, we are certainly in a tech, um, disruptive, you know, there, there are a couple sectors that are, are certainly in a bubble. Uh, that would be cryptocurrency, uh, tech in general, um, things that are considered disruptive, things like Uber, Lyft, and all these things that are, that are replacing uh, traditional platforms. And uh, there is certainly a, a price bubble because valuations are high above revenues. Um, valuations are, are high out of just, they're, they're just crazy. Um, and th it can go on for quite a while. Uh, but you guys certainly want to consider that and understand that as an investor in the space. Uh, but then you kind of have the rest of everything else, which is not really inflated or a bubble. Uh, and, you know, not to, to be interesting here, I actually consider energy one of the most underlooked investments out there right now, um, oil in particular. Um, so if you guys look at what happened in the dot com bubble, uh, yes, of course, massive companies uh, came out of that bubble, uh, such as Google and Amazon, for example. Uh, and if you would have just stuck with the winners, you would have, of course, been handsomely rewarded. But keep in mind that it would have taken a long time, right? 10 to 14 years on average uh, to recoup your investments from the peak of the dot-com bubble uh, to current market time. So uh, I think a very similar thing is bound to happen in cryptocurrency. Something is going to bring prices in line with reality. And we're going to get the actual disruptive tech that is going to change the world coming out of that and the rewards for long-term investors. Uh, but in the short run, uh, notice that, you know, note that, that uh, when there are bubbles, right? So dot-com bubble is a great example of this. Um, energy was the best, you know, was, was the outperformer for the next decade. Um, so uh, definitely something to take a look at. There are, you know, I would not recommend leveraged ETFs, but just ETFs and indexes are good ways to get, at, to get, uh, to get um, exposure uh, to the energy sector, um, oil in particular, natural gas. Uh, and, you know, I think that 
I think that that's going to most likely happen again because, you know, like it or hate it, uh, there has been this massive green push movement, of course, but, you know, oil still runs the world and will continue to run the world. So it's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but I don't think that we're going to see oil go anywhere anytime soon. Um, yeah, just buy bacon futures, man. You know, the world runs on bacon. All right, guys, let's start breaking down the markets. We're going to start off today with Bitcoin currently trading at 47,572. We are below the daily baseline. Uh, today, we have a bearish engulfing candle completely overcoming this low volume doji. Uh, we do have this nice uh, bullish engulfing candle that actually it's not really a bullish engulfing candle because it didn't close over the high, but this nice Harami candle right here uh, that we did open up with on Saturday. And then Sunday was this pretty weak, very low volume doji. As you guys can see, the volume was very weak, uh, leading to this again. Uh, pretty pretty overall low volume push to the downside. Now remember, uh, falling volume is almost always bearish uh, because it just indicates that there's not enough buying pressure currently happening at this current area to to support price. Um, so uh, as you guys know, uh, well as you may or may not know, uh, we did get the continuation short signal on Friday. So uh, shorts on both Bitcoin and Ethereum were opened up on Friday. Uh, drawdown for two days, and now we are back in the profit. I just checked the sheets. We are actually up 80, uh, 0.8%, uh, so very meager on the Bitcoin short, but up 3.15% on the Ethereum short. So this is the only two active manual trades that I have open currently in the marketplace, but we do have the strategies uh, running pretty wild. So we do have, uh, let's just take a scroll back through the, just give me a second here, guys. Yeah, we've got bottom feeder active on just a ton of trades right now uh, and the super duper demon strategy active as well. We'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Uh, OK, so uh, daily short position. So we are in swing trade shorts on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, what do we need to see to um, what do we need to see for that uh, sentiment to be changed? We need to see uh, price closing uh, above the baseline or we need to see. Uh, I would also simultaneously accept uh, Minx dipping down into oversold territory and recovering in combination with that price action as well. Let's go ahead and load up Quadrigo. So for those who are a little bit late to the party so we can get targets for these short trades, uh, stop losses at 52,561 if one is taking the daily short today uh, with targets at 44,263, 40,949, and 37,620. So we are looking for a price declination down to 37,000. Uh, let's look at auto VWAP and actually see how that lines up. So we only have current auto VWAP support coming in from this most recent low long tail. We already crashed through our previous auto VWAP support. So getting rid of that and looking at VPVR, we can see that we do have our point of control down here at 33,487, which is right in the middle of this, uh, this accumulation area right here. Now there's two important areas of the market to point out on the way down there. There is, of course, and I'm going to highlight them now. Let's get in here. Uh, get rid of EPVR here real quick. So let's get our rectangle uh, tool in here. All right, so we've got this area of the market, which roughly stretches from 39,000 up to about 43,000. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. So that area of the market and then just the area of the market that I already pointed out. So these are the two strong support levels for Bitcoin that I do see coming in. Uh, let's talk about this for a little bit. Okay. So, uh, this, the, so the value area, the point of control, for those of you guys who don't know, the point of control is the area where the most price, uh, the, the most volume by price occurred. Uh, and this is fairly evident to see. So in this recent area of the market, stretching back to January, so pretty much all of 2021, uh, the majority of buying, uh, and, and selling, right. The majority of market activity occurred at around 34,506, which means longs are currently in profit. Uh, but this is a good fair price. I think for Bitcoin, uh, do I see price retesting and retracing this? Yes. Will that turn us into a bullish trend? If we just go down to that magic level? No, because the trend is more important than any arbitrary price price levels. So even though that can be a strong level of support and a good DCA level, always keep in mind the price can go significantly lower. We can still have 80 to 90% corrections in Bitcoin, just like we can completely reverse here and go up to $100,000. All right. Uh, predicting these things is impossible. Having a plan for what happens if something happens is the point. That is the point of profitable trading. It's not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, it's not being this 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 godly being who just has these predictive abilities it's having a plan and having the determination and discipline to execute on that plan when uh when conditions occur all right so 
uh, you know, so individuals who are looking to stack up for the long term would want to look to be buyers around 42,000 and then also around 34,000 as well. I think those are good support levels for BTC. Uh, and the reason I point this level out is because this level has acted as support and resistance before as well. And we do have, if we zoom in, that is also a high value level also. All right. So uh, that's the daily time frame. I did want to zoom back out to the weekly uh, and just point out, guys, the weekly baseline is coming around at that 41,884. That does line up. If you pay attention, that does line up very well right there. You can see that rectangle that I drew on the daily, and that's almost directly in line with where the weekly baseline is at. Okay, so we can still see just based on weekly trends here, we can still see another 10 to 11 percent correction in Bitcoin to the downside uh, and then getting hold on just a second, guys. All right. Uh, and that low, sorry. So uh, weekly baseline right here with that previous level of support. And then as we can see here, this was the test of the weekly baseline after we first corrected from the market high in March. Uh, so something to pay attention to as well. We'll price retrace here. If we crash through the baseline, keep in mind that we're going to be having a bearish weekly trend as well. So definitely long-term hedging uh, to protect uh, on, on further downside. Okay. Uh, we also have Minx crossed underneath. We have not gotten the bearish signal from Minx yet, but that's going to be lining up almost perfectly with the cross below the baseline in my experience with Minx. So as you guys can see, uh, here we get the weekly long signal all the way down here uh, at 9,000 back in May of 2020. Uh, and that did not get us out until this false step up at 34,000. Okay. Uh, and then we did get the continuation long signal here for that last part of the bull market as well. Okay. Um, all right, uh, four hour here on uh, Bitcoin. We have tested this level of support right around 46,000, uh, the upper 46,000, actually like 47,000, but that's a little too high, but 47,000, uh, we've tested it once, twice. This is the third test. Uh, and we have not yet made a higher high as well here on the meso time frame. So this is not looking good for Bitcoin. Uh, if we do get a slip before this 47,000, uh, expect to see some pretty high volume come in, especially because we're already starting to get that. This is a four hour short signal that we're getting on Bitcoin right now. Um, do want to let's hop over here real quick. That's not the chart. Here's the chart. I just wanted to look at the VWAP double bounce strategy for you day traders out there. Uh, so we did have two trades. Uh, coming in for the five minute chart here on Bitcoin since, uh, well, basically since I've been looking at the charts, uh, we do have price on this, uh, on the sell off that's, that pretty much occurred from 8 a.m. Uh, to 1030, just, just kind of recently stopped. Um, we have one entry candle, uh, here, which was a losing trade. And then the second trade got us a beautiful, let's just measure this out. I think we actually hit two to one on this trade as well. Uh, here we have our stop loss at the swing low. So we did get that one to one. We got one to one. Okay, excuse me. We got one to one on that trade, about a $500 profit for those trading with the, uh, the way that I have this particular account set up. Uh, and if we wanted to go for two to one, uh, we would want to move our stop loss to break even on intraday time frames, move that stop loss up here, and we'd be targeting 48,124. Keep in mind, that's not going to be anything special. That's not going to be a higher high. That's not going to be anything. That's just going to be probably a good area to reshort from. Uh, daily point of control from the session volume is all the way up here at 48,000. You can see once we significantly broke down from that, uh, we just we just weren't able to get, get close to it. So uh, that's kind of the level that's important now, 48,719 average price and the daily point of control from session volume. Uh, and uh, yeah, I do not see us getting back up there today. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on over to Ethereum. Ethereum, as usual, moving with a little bit more gusto than Bitcoin today. Uh, Ethereum giving a really nice breakdown below the daily baseline and making a new low in the last week. This is a new weekly low. Uh, not obviously this low is lower, but since then we haven't had a lower low. So new weekly low. Um, Today's low on Ethereum was 3,756. Uh, so we do have a couple things. The continuation short did signal here on Friday, as you guys can see. Let's zoom in on that. Here's the continuation short signal on Friday. Uh, we did have a couple days of push up, but again, rejected from the baseline. So just beautiful to see uh, when everything lines up very well. Uh, and now another 
uh, now just another bearish engulfing candle and making new lows. This does not look good uh, for Ethereum or BTC here. Uh, and again, Ethereum was was holding up relatively well. But what is this? What is this actually is? You know, all this volatility. This is distribution. Just distribution, guys. Okay. Um, okay. Let's get over into. Uh, let's go look at the super duper demon strategy and see what positions we're taking. So we're just going to scan uh, through the Bybit charts and looking in, and why on Bybit? Because again, the two, the two exchanges that we're probably going to primarily support moving forward are going to be FTX and Bybit. Um, you know, a Binance is a headache. Uh, and just honestly, Bybit and FTX are the best platforms to trade on. They offer the most. Uh, you know, Binance is is so... I'm just kind of over Bybit. Or excuse me, I'm kind of over Binance. So anyways... Um, uh, BTC USD, we do not have an active three hour short using the super duper demo strategy. Um, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum was an interesting one. We did get into the short here. Uh, we did take 50% of our profits off here, but we did hit our break even stop loss on this push to the upside here. So not in an active position. If you are trading with all in all out, you could still be in this position waiting for a close above 4,128. Uh, EOS is, let's see here. Uh, EOS is flat. EOS just pulling back down below the DEMA line, um, pulling back down to the super trend line. Uh, so nothing going on here with EOS. Uh, XRP USD. Also, we had a long, it was a bad trade prior to a really successful short uh, and just flat right now. Actually, no, excuse me. Uh, we are not flat on XRP. XRP is in an active short. XRP is in an active short. All right, Solana, uh, still in this short from over here. Uh, Solana took the short. Um, all the way back on the 3rd of December, and we are still in that trade, just crushing it. Um, Cardano, uh, let's see, been a little, vol little, been a little bit of volatility here, but uh, Cardano, is, or excuse me, Cardano is signaling a three-hour short right now on the current candle. Uh, Tezos, uh, we are flat on Tezos currently. BNB USDT still in an active short. AXS still in an active short. Let's see your polka dot. Uh, Polkadot did just signal for a short on the previous three-hour candle. Uh, Chainlink, flat. We are flat on Litecoin. Actually, interesting. Uh, no, so this was a three-hour sell signal on Litecoin as well on the previous three-hour candle. Uh, Doge, we are still in an active short on Doge. Uh, Matic signaled for a short earlier this morning, around three o'clock in the morning, so still active. Uh, EOS USDT is flat. Uh, Uniswamp it was in an active short, but we did hit our first take profit and then our stop even uh, break even stop loss right here. So if you're trading with a 50 50 profit taking strategy, uh, you are out of this trade uh, unless you have some continuation system that I have not yet implemented in the Super Duper Dima strategy. Uh, but if you're trading all in, all out, you are still in this trade. Uh, sushi, uh, let's see, we had a long hit our profit target relatively quickly and then break even stop loss. So nothing to do here on sushi, uh, AVAX, uh, we just, so, uh, entered the short here, uh, price moved against us. And then on this, uh, push to the downside, we did our first profit target. So AVAX just hit its first profit target on the short, uh, phantom, same thing in the short here, just hit its first profit target. So still active shorts on AVAX and phantom, uh, Aave still in an active short, uh, Bitcoin crap, nothing. Algorand still in an active short. Ethereum classic, uh, still in an active short since again, this is one of those lingerers that's been going on since the 3rd of December. Uh, Filecoin just signaled an active short on, uh, the last three hour candle. So that's an active signal. Uh, compound is still in an active short from back over on the third. Uh, the Zem protocol is currently just signaled a short on the last three hour candle. Uh, Tron just signaled a three hour short on the last candle theta is still in an active short from all the way over here uh let's see here stellar lumens is still in an active short uh insane clown posse is still in an active short uh bit is still in an active short oh no i'm sorry yeah still in an active short but if you're using 50 50 you hit your style you're after your first take profit you hit your break even stop loss right there so uh sand protocol nothing gala chain nothing Mana, nothing. Uh, Shiba Inu actually tried to go for the long here. Uh, looking like that is going to be a losing trade. 
Nothing on LRC nor Engine Coin. Nothing on Wu, IOTX, Omise Go, Luna, Chili's, Didex. Oh, I think it was Didex that got. I don't know. Didex went down because of uh, the AWS outage. Curve Finance, nothing. Hedera Hash Graph, Seller. Okay, so nothing. So uh, we've got some pretty active positions there. The strategies are trading pretty actively right now. Um, let's go take a look at... Uh, you know, I think we'll probably start doing FTX and... Um, Bybit, but it's just easy to kind of run through Bybit and give you guys an idea of what the strategy is doing. Uh, let's talk about the overall market. Market is just absolutely tanking today. Uh, you guys can see from the crypto bubbles up there, it is a sea of red. Now, uh, if you know, there's always multiple ways to do this. You know, when you see blood on the streets, you should be a buyer. You know, you got to couple that with the fact of what the overall market is doing. We've got a long way to correct, and it's been a heck of a time. So, uh, you know, just trade wisely. If there's high quality projects that you feel, uh, you know, you want to step in, but but you want to do so. If, listen, if you don't have a trading strategy for buying reversals in a, when a market dips, right? Realize that this is the area of the market that can lose you all your money, all right? Um, it's okay to just cash out, move aside, and just relax, okay? It's also fine. Again, you can just adopt my strategy, which is I continue to hold through the down cycles. You know why? Because um, most individuals, most investors will get spooked by some piece of news. And then they will pull all their money out of the market. And often the market just goes right back up. But even when they get it right and the market goes down a lot, they never actually buy the low. Okay. They never actually buy the low. They never get back in. It's maybe like, you know, six months to a couple of years later, they buy another high. You know what I mean? So you don't want to be that guy or that gal. Um, if you believe in cryptocurrency and you want to be an investor for the long term, then you dollar cost average, you take advantage of these dips, and you build your portfolio for the long run. All right, so let's go through the chat and see if we can't answer some of your questions while we get back over here and uh, monitor the day trading scene. Alex81SG says, Bitcoin just bounced off the 200 daily moving average. Uh, should one wait for a better entry on a short? I mean, that's going to obviously, it's going to depend on your own personal strategy. Uh, the signal, uh, the trade that I took was on Friday um, because that's the, way to, that's, that's the way to do it. You know, you when you get the signal, you enter into the trade. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I, I don't tend to look at other stuff that's just outside my strategy because it just confuses me and just gives me too much to focus on. Uh, and because all these things aren't necessarily right. I've seen price completely carve through the 200 daily moving average. I've seen it bounce off of it. Um, you know, if the 200 daily moving average is an aspect of your strategy and you want to optimize your entry, that's fine. But just the one lesson I've learned is just if you get a good signal, you enter into it, uh, you set it and forget it, and you walk away from the charts. Again, not telling you what trade to take, just talking about general strategy. Uh, B-Flow, right meow. St. C, hey all. Hope you're doing well. Shout outs to you, my friend. Uh, Profit Bear says, what's up, Justin? So when I take out equity from my house to fix it up, but realize that if I buy BTC instead, it might make more than if I make repairs to my home. So when do I buy BTC? Uh, I am not going to be an individual that recommends that you um, that you utilize uh, loaned money to purchase uh, an investment asset. Uh, I will never be that guy. Um, there are guys like that. You can find them on YouTube. They're usually the ones with the terrible thumbnails. Um, so... Uh, I would listen, I would, I would fix your housemate. Um, you know, if you, um, it does not seem to me that we're in a situation where I could even condone somebody jokingly saying like, I'm going to max out the credit cards at this price. Like if Bitcoin was like at 10,000, you know, I would probably just like, you know, I wouldn't recommend you to do it, but I would laugh and be like, okay, man, you know, take your risk. It's probably a good idea, but, um, no, don't do that, man. Don't, don't do that. Um, you know, because listen, you just. The downside on that is too great, right? The downside on that is too great. And the first and foremost thing is always making sure that you're financially stable and that your family's taken care of, right? So do I think inflation will buff the housing market prices? 
Do I think that inflation will buff the housing market making prices rise? Oh, do I think inflation will buff the housing market making prices rise? I'll tell you what, it's a seller's market right now. It's hard to find a home. Um, and I know that because I'm going through most likely going to be selling my previous home back where I was living. Um, I don't know. I think that, uh, I, I think that, that likely we are going to see uh, housing prices continue to rise. Uh, and I think that that is more to do with, um, honestly, I think that is more has less to do with inflation, uh, and, and more to do with, with, um, the sociology of what's going on. We've got a ton of people. Um, we got a ton of people moving into to the United States. Uh, we've got a ton of immigration happening. Um, we've got a ton of just a ton of disruption and change, you know, like people are moving to different places. Um, and that is going to just bid up prices and in, in places that are popular. And that's really not going to stop climate change is off, obviously something to consider as well as people move out of areas that they feel are more affected uh, and move to safer areas. This is happening on a national scale. This is happening on a global scale as well. So and um, this is happening state to state. So uh, I think that we are uh, likely going to see uh, housing prices continue to rise. Yeah, hot all the bricks and mortar. All right, guys, listen. Um, so uh, probably going to be keeping these streams relatively short and quick. Yeah, I don't want to sit here and wax too loquaciously. I want the I want these to be uh, info filled and action packed and fun and exciting for you guys. Uh, gives me more time, obviously, to work on things uh, for the premium members as well. So uh, I don't, I didn't see any, uh, I didn't see any requests, and I didn't see any, um, didn't see any uh, any other questions. But I will uh, open up the chat for about five to ten minutes here and see if we have any chart requests or questions, and uh, that I will gladly take. And then I'm going to go back to doing what I do, which is programming strategies. Mr. Ether says, definitely going to continue to rise until we see a crash. All right, coming through on Twitch. Shout out to you, my friend. Uh, Artilla saying, uh, uh, CR, CHR USDT chart request. I got you, man. Okay. Yeah, pretty neat. Okay, so um yeah, this is really I mean this is looking very similar to to Bitcoin. I mean this this chart looks almost identical to Bitcoin here. Um insofar as like what's been happening over the last few weeks. Uh so we have price uh twist the trend right here and we have price collapse to the baseline kind of falls right through it again on this uh, market sell-off and we've just been moving uh we've just been drifting lazily to the downside no lower highs no lower lows no v bottom recovery uh we did get the initial short signal from minx on this candle capturing the good portion of the sell-off uh culminating in this candle right here we've had volume continue to fall falling volume is always bearish uh let's see here uh, today's candle is relatively interesting. We do have a curl up on Minx, uh, which would actually be a sign out of the short or a signal to exit your short. Uh, so if one did enter the short here, uh, they are exiting at this current candle. So I would likely agree with that, or I would book profits on this current candle. I don't think you can short CHR USDT, but uh, just that's the way I tend to think about things. Um, so yeah, I don't see I don't see any impetus to purchase this until we're back above uh, until we're back above seventy five cents is where the current baseline is until we have positive green bullish volume uh, or until we have some some objective buy signals here from our indicators. Um, uh, negative momentum falling off here. Okay, and that's totally fine. We can just see that through price action as well. Um, I just don't see any any objective signal here. You know, you could be risky and look for the breakdown trade right here, assuming that the market is going to break out. But I'd use a relatively tight stop loss. Um, here on CHR USDT. That's about it, man. All right, uh, Joe asking for Matic, Mr. Polygon on the daily.
Yeah, Matic beginning its decline here, I think, right? It was kind of signaled right here. This is where we got the uh, crossover. This would have been a great, great sell signal here on, on Minx. Not an actual sell signal, but just, just a good sign of the end, right? Uh, before this, 13, uh, about 15% correction so far down to the daily baseline. Uh, we don't yet have rising momentum, but just keep in mind that's because of this push to the upside was, was quite volatile. We have volatility expanding here. Uh, we do have negative volume here. Price is lower and volume is lower than it has been. So not... Not a big rise in the volume spike, and we don't actually have the short signal here on Matic yet. Um, Matic has been able to kind of maintain this upper range pretty well since it made its high back in May of 21. Um, but yeah. Um, so what do we need? Okay, so what do we need to see? What do we need to see to to get out of Matic? We need to see uh, price close below one seven ninety two dollar seventy nine, uh, and that would be the sign to sell. Um, or, and furthermore, I should say, uh, we need to see our indicators uh, flashing negative on this as well. So Minx isn't quite there yet. Wada Atar is there with uh, Delta, but it's not there with volatility. Uh, and our volume indicator is there, but it's a weak signal, not a strong signal. So we do want to typically, we will have better success when we short on strong signals rather than weak signals. You can just see the follow through that, that comes from, you can go over here, you can see the follow through that comes on strong signals. And you can see the follow through that comes on weak signals. Um, now, there, listen, there is a, a riskier reversal baseline bounce trade here. Um, so we could do something like a bottom feeder trade on Matic. Uh, looking to completely retrace this up to 209. I would likely be a little bit more conservative with that. Maybe $1.96. Greg T, Shiba Inu. Okay, something interesting about Shiba Inu that I'll just point out here. Shiba Inu is one of the top tokens held by Ethereum whales. So Ethereum whales have not exited Shiba Inu. Um, it is most likely gonna, gonna have another um, surge at some point in time uh, because you know it really has kind of astonishated itself as a community coin. It's not even a meme coin anymore, it's a community coin. So, um, so just something to point out. Uh, whales are still holding Shiba Inu, but you guys, check out whalestats.io. Keep yourself updated on that. That can change very, very quickly. Yeah, Shiba Inu has just been in this downtrend, though, right? Just been in this downtrend since, you know, we peaked back at the uh, at the end of October, just a week before Halloween. I uh, got the continuation short signal here, the initial short signal here. Uh, yeah, things things are not looking good here for, for Shiba Inu. Uh, we, we've held this level pretty well, but again, just looks like everything else dripping down today. And if Bitcoin and Ethereum go, Shiba Inu is going to go as well. Um, if Shiba Inu does reverse here and we get above 39.42, then again, potentially a buy. Um, it wouldn't take much for Minx to revert back here and give us some, some buying pressure, but no divergence. Uh, just yeah, really no nothing here. What about Hex? Hex is always a buy. Uh, let's look at Hex on, on Uniswamp. Mm. Uh, there's a little bullish divergence on the daily, actually, here on Hex. Looking at Hex USDT. So we're at about 16 cents. I might take this up to like 21 cents. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we're in a, we're in a bearish trend. We're making lower lows. Um, the only thing I do like here is the bullish divergence. It's very weak though. Um, and yeah, we don't have negative momentum coming. We don't have negative delta anymore. Um, we really haven't had a, a positive volume day in, in quite a while. Um, and yeah, just just. Minx has been like continuation short, continuation short, continuation short, continuation short, just short it, short, short. Um, yeah, listen, I mean, don't, don't underestimate the ability of Hex to pump. Um, and we might actually see it push up to 21 cents here. Hex has been kind of moving interesting, so.
Uh, Cash Law 77 on Twitch says uh, Solana at $80. We zoom out. What do I think? You know, that's not really the kind of chartist I am, but I'll do my best. You know, listen. I think Solana is is pretty exciting. There a lot of a lot of stuffs launching on their ecosystem right now. Um, probably a good place to go to look for right now for quick flips is going to be kind of anything launching on the Solana network with an IDO um, or anything kind of minting NFTs on Solana. But uh, look, let's like let me just show let, let me show you a chart. Let's go look at. I mean, hell, we like XRP is a good example, I guess. Right? Like it's, it's almost kind of like Solana reminds me of like, you know, if we look at this chart and we're like, all right, man, zoom out. Like, what do you think? And at the time I would have said like, well, you know, XRP has got like a ton of like potential and everything and, and all this, you know, like, but you know, like, look what's happened. Look what happened to XRP since there, you know, it took a long time to push to the upside. Um, and XRP has never, you know, ever, ever, ever gotten really close to that, that $3 top when, when CN, when CNET told you to buy it, you know what I mean? When C-SPAN was, <laughs> shit was on C-SPAN dog. Um, Kind of an interesting uptrend in XRP. And actually, listen, um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've been tempted to begin accumulating XRP again uh, because not for, for multiple reasons. Like one, um, they did pretty well in their SEC battles and their lawsuit battle. And like way better than I expected. I kind of expected them to get screwed, but they did not. And whales have been accumulating a lot of XRP lately. So... Kind of, kind of interesting. Um, you know, honestly, I don't have a lot of, uh, of, of take on Solana. The project's relatively centralized. It's really popular, though. Um, and we've seen a lot of, like, centralized projects that do really, really well. So um, do I think Maddox is a better network? Yes. Do I think, you know, do I think um, Polkadot's better? Yes. But yeah, Solana's okay. And it's probably going to do well. Uh, Crypto Bull is stuck in Kadena and Theta Longs. May just become a holder of these projects. It's never too late to exit your position, man. You can realize the loss and, and move on. Uh, AM says, appreciate your team and content. Thank you for the consistent and calculated approach to the markets. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Bflow says, Paralox as an initiator would have had you in the short yesterday. Nice. Uh, Jiron Zhang says, should I take the risk to buy one inch USDT now? Um, I probably wouldn't buy too much of anything now. Um, one inch is kind of cool. I don't really understand the, the need for the token though. Like many things that absolutely do not need a token. Um, you know, like, listen, you're not in a bad level, but we've tested support one, two, three, four times. And the overall market is trending downwards. You know, this isn't a terrible place uh, to buy one inch USDT. Just keep in mind, your margins are fairly high. You know, you've got like, you know, what are you going to use? A 30% stop loss? A 40% stop loss? Maybe. I wouldn't. He flows short on shiv for that three days. Uh, Mr. Ether wants to buy back into hex at seven cents. Get back in now at 16 cents. Come on, dog. And if you really love it at seven cents, you'll really love it at two cents. <laughs> Uh, Jordan Ser Giordano Serio says, will Ethereum likely free fall to 3,400, 3,700 range from here? If we break down, um, hold on, before I say yes to those targets, let's actually just go look over at Ethereum. Refresh my memory. Um, honestly, if we really do have a significant breakdown here, the weekly baseline's all the way down at 26,000, right? Or uh, 2,600, excuse me. So, um, like, even if we wanted to be, like, let's see what we've done in the sense of fibs. I think we've been doing, like, yeah, almost to the 618. Um, I 
Hi, puppy. Let's see here. Uh, yep, that one hit the 618. So if we went here, hit the 618. Yeah, 34. 34 at the very least, just kind of keeping in line with what we've done. Um, but again, that's going to be if it's not just a retracement. If this is an actual, actual correction, then we're going down to 26, 2600 at least. At the least. YOLO! <laughs> All right, guys. Um... Thank you for your time and patience this morning. We're going to go back over to the main scene and I'm going to say goodbye to you wonderful people. Okay, so overall, interesting interesting day in the markets. We do have things kind of bleeding out and continuing after a weak performance. Overall, very weak performance last week. We just don't see any signs of that turning around, guys. Um, you know, pay attention to what the whales are accumulating if you guys are interested in kind of building those long-term positions and just focus on projects that have a lot of focus on projects that you actually believe in and would hold to zero okay that's a good metric right like buy things that you actually believe in for the long term that you understand that you think will make the world a better place that's how you can actually have the conviction to hold these things through the bad times because long-term investors are are rewarded more consistently than short-term speculators but for that short-term speculation <laughs> Bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me for another Cracking Cryptocurrency Market Update. My name is Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. If you guys are interested in joining our community, make sure to check out everything that we offer over at Premium.CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Uh, mentoring, strategy, uh, premium signals, as well as our premium indicator suite, and a slew a ton of other stuff, educational content. Uh, you guys have no idea. Um, otherwise, uh, if that's not your bag, make sure to click the thumbs up button. Costs you nothing. Let's me know that I'm making good content and that you enjoy the work that we do here on the stream. Hit the subscribe button as well so you never miss an episode. We will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time for another Cracking Cryptocurrency Market Update. And I will see you guys in the Discord. Cheers, guys. Oh, I didn't say the thing. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, and or death threats or hot stock tips, leave them in the comment section down below. All uh, right, somebody told me that I have to say that at the end of every show. I'm contractually obligated now. So, all right, guys, have a good day.